Hello everybody, welcome back to the maths problem of the day questions. I hope you all had a nice bank holiday weekend. So we're now moving on to day 10 of the orange and blue questions. Can't believe how many we've got through already. So let's start off by having a look at day 10 orange questions. So we start off by being told we have some digit cards. Remember the digit is just one number within a number. Mary makes a two digit number using two of the cards. How many different numbers can she make? Okay, so for this one, we have to think about combinations or patterns of combinations. So we have the numbers one, four, and five. And we need to think if we just use two of those three digits at a time, how many different two digit numbers could we make? Well, one way we can go about this is actually by writing it down. And we're going to use a methodical approach, thinking about having an order so that we don't jump around and accidentally miss one. So my order is that I'm going to start by using the number one in my tens column, because if it's a two digit number, it will have a tens and a unit. So if I put one in the tens column, I could either put the four in the units to make 15, or I could put the five in the units. Sorry, the four in the units to make 14, or the five in the units to make 15. So here are my three options, and then here's the first two I've created. Now these are my only two options by using the number one in the tens column. So I'm now going to have to move to a different number in my tens column. So I'm going to choose the four. So if we put the four in our tens column, we could have the one in the units to make 41, or we could have the five in the units to make 45. So now we've come up with four different options. But I think that's it. I think that's all the options with four in the tens. So now we've got to move to the five in the tens. So if I put the five in the tens column, I could use the one in the units to make 51, or I could use the four to make 54. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. We've used one in the tens column, four in the tens column, and five in the tens column. So this is all of our options. Another way to do it, do it is to think we had three digits, and they could all go in two possible places. Here we've got the one in the tens column, here we've got the one in the ones column. So you combine your number of options, which is the three digits, by the number of places they can go, the two, and three times two equals six. So you can write it all out to make sure you've got them all, or you can do a multiplication to work out your combinations. Okay, so that's question one done. Let's have a look at question two, some of our classic missing number questions. So in this one, we have 60 plus blank equals 79. And we know by now, by describing our 79 as the whole and our 60 as a part, we need to do the inverse operation here. So instead of doing an addition calculation, we're going to do a subtraction and we're going to do 79 minus 60 equals blank. Now there are a few ways you could do this. You could write it out and use column subtraction. You could count on from 60 to 79 using hops on your number line, perhaps jump in 10 and then ones. It is up to you. If we do our column subtraction, we have nine take away zero is nine, and seven take away six is one, so it leaves us with 19. So let's have a look at the second missing number question, because this is slightly different. We have an equals in the middle. Remember what we know about an equals is that whatever is on one side of it has to be the same as what's on the other side of it. So on one side of our equals, we have 15, plus 12. And on the other side, we have 12 plus blank. So 
there are a couple of ways we could go about this. We could work out 15 plus 12 as a calculation. And then whatever that comes to needs to be on this side. So we could figure out the blank to make sure it's the same. But if we look at these numbers a bit closer, you can see that we have 15 plus 12. And over here we have 12 plus something. So I've already got a 12 on both sides that is the same. And on both sides, I'm doing an addition. So actually, the addition sentence is the same on both sides. They've just swapped the order. But remember, it doesn't matter what order we do addition in, it will total the same whole answer. So the only thing that we need to do is move the 15 from this side to this side. So 15 plus 12 equals 12 plus 15. So because the 12s were the same and the calculation was the same in addition, we know the same number is missing. And to check and prove it, 15 plus 12 is 27, 12 plus 15 is 27. Okay, let's have a look at question three on the orange questions for day 10 then. So we're back to the scales which we had on day nine, but a bit different this time. We have one green cube and two red spheres. And we know that because it's horizontal, because it's level with the 70 kilograms, it is equal. So one green and two red equals 70. Okay. Now we're then told below that one green is level with 40. So what we actually know is that that green cube itself equals 40 kilograms. So if one cube and two spheres is 70, but one cube on its own is 40, we can move this number up to our original diagram. So we now know that 40 plus two red spheres equals 70. Okay, so now it's a bit like a missing number question. We need to figure out the missing number that the red spheres are worth. So let's have a think about this. We have 40 plus blank equals 70. So we know that when we're looking for a missing number, we just do the inverse. So we're going to do 70 minus 40 equals blank. Again, you can count on in tens from 40 to 70. You can use a number line, you can do column subtraction. Whatever method works best for you. But 70 take away 40, we will realize is 30. So I now know that this section, the two red spheres, equal 30. But I have been asked in the question for the mass of the sphere. Not both spheres, but one sphere. So if I know that all together they add up to 30, and there are two of them that are equal, or two of them that are the same, I have to split my 30 into two equal groups. So we're splitting it, splitting it in half, or dividing it by two. Some of you might be able to do this straight away in your head. Some of you might need to break it down and think, well, I know that half of 20 is 10. And I know that half of 40 is 20. So your answer should be between 10 and 40. Perhaps keep counting in twos till you get there. See which method works for you. And you will figure out that once we've split 30 in half, each sphere is worth 15 kilograms. So the mass of one sphere is 15 kilograms. And that is the orange questions for day 10 done. So let us move on to the blue questions. So we're back to our digit cards here, but a bit of a different question this time. We've been told that we have these four digit cards, one, four, five, and nine. And we have to find the four digit number, so we have to use all of the cards, that is closest to 5,000. You may use each card only once. So we've got to use all four of the cards. Each of the numbers can only appear once. We've got to try and get as close to 5,000 as we can. 
Well, first of all, let's think about on a number line. I put 5,000 in the middle of my number line. We could be close by being bigger than 1,000, or we could be close by being smaller than 5,000. So we could go either side. The important thing is how big these gaps are going to be. We want the smallest gap possible until we reach 5,000. So let's have a look at how we could start. Well, I could think about my place value columns. I could think thousands, hundreds, tens, and units. And I know that I want to be close to 5,000. So I could start by putting the five in the thousands column because surely that will be close. I'm going to be 5,000 and something. What would the next number need to be to get as close as possible to 5,000? Well, I need my smallest number next to keep it as close as possible. So I'm going to put a one in. So at this point, without even filling out the rest, I'm going to have 5,100 and something. So I know the closest I could possibly be at this point to 5,000 is 100 away. But it's actually going to be more than that because my next two digits aren't zeros. So again, I'm going to put my next smallest digit in to keep it closer. So the next smallest digit would be four, and that would leave me with a nine. So my first attempt has given me the number 5,149. Now we need to be as close to 5,000 as possible. Here we can see that we are 149 bigger than 5,000. So 149 bigger. So I'm going to keep that over there. I wonder if we could have got any closer. Now, some of you may have already spotted this, but actually, if we go less than 5,000, we might be able to get closer. So which number do you think we would put to put in the thousands column so that we're less than 5,000, but very close? That's right. We're going to put the four in here. So if we start with 4,000, now we're trying to make as big a number as possible rather than as small a number as possible. So now I want the next biggest number available to me, which is nine. Now from here, we can see that whatever I put next, I'm going to end up with 4,900 and something, which means as far away as I could possibly be would be 100. So 100 would be close to the 149. I think this will be a better option, but let's just keep going. So remember, I want to make this number as big as possible. So the digits I have left, I need the biggest one next, which will be a five, and then my one. So 4,951. Okay, let's think what gap this has got to 5,000. Well, I know that 4,950 would just be 50 away. So as I'm one bigger than that, I'm one smaller than 50 to fill the gap. This number is only 49 smaller. So my first attempt was 149 bigger. My second attempt is 49 smaller. Which is closer to 5,000? Well, it's the one with the smallest gap. And 49 is definitely smaller than 149. So 4,951 is your correct answer here. It's all about knowing your place value columns and knowing where to start. Okay, moving on to question two then. It's some more missing numbers, complete the number sentence. So we have 65 plus blank equals 79. And I think you all know by now, because we've done loads of these, we're going to do the inverse operation to find the missing part. So 79 take away 65 equals blank. This time, instead of doing column subtraction, I'm going to count on from 65 to 79. I know that if I add 10, I will end up at 75. And then I know that five and four make nine. So 10 plus another four gives me a gap of 14. So 65 plus 14 equals 79. Okay, 
And then we've got another one where we have our equal sign in the middle. Here we have 83 plus 28 equals 82 plus blank. Now, just as I said on the orange questions, I could do the addition and work out what this side is. And then once I've worked out what that side is, I'll have my whole and I can do a takeaway to find out the missing part. But I think there's a quicker way to notice this one. Over here we have 83 and over here we have 82. What is the difference between 83 and 82? That's right, it's just one. In fact, we have taken off one. So to get from 83 to 82, we minus one. Now, if we want this side to be the same as this side, because we have our equals in the middle, if we took one from one of the numbers, what do you think we need to do to the other number to rebalance that and make it the same again? That's right, we've got to do the opposite. Because we took one off, we need to put that one back on so that both sides will be level and will be balanced. So 83 minus one is 82. We need to add one to our 28, which will give us 29. So 83 plus 28 is equal to, or the same as, 82 plus 29. If you wanted to work it out to prove it, you could do these ones, I think, in your head using partitioning and number bonds. 80 plus 20, I know, is 100. And 3 plus 8 is 11. So 111. Check it over here. 80 plus 20 is 100. 2 plus 9 is 11. 111. So these two number sentences are equal. So 83 plus 28 equals 82 plus 29. Okay, now on to our last question of day 10. And we are looking at some geometry and a perimeter. So we are told three identical rectangles are arranged to make a shape, which you can see in the diagram. They've labelled some of the dimensions of our diagram. And then we need to find out the perimeter of the shape. Well, my first question to you is, can you remember what the definition of a perimeter is? So our perimeter is the length around the outside of a shape. So how would we work out a perimeter? If we want the length all the way around the outside, let me draw the shape out onto my whiteboard and we can think what we know. Well, if I want the perimeter, as I say, that is the length all the way around the outside. So my perimeter goes like this all the way around the outside. And to work it out, I simply need to add up all of those lengths. Now, we cannot do that straight away because we have been given the sum of the dimensions, but not all of the dimensions. So I think our task, first of all, is to label what we know on the diagram. So I'll pop in the 7, 3, 2, and 4.5. Now we need to think about all of these sides that we have that don't have a length labelled on them. Can we figure it out? Well, there was a key word in our question. It said three identical rectangles. What does that word identical mean? So identical means exactly the same. So the measurements for the top rectangle will be the same for the middle and the bottom rectangle. So let's have a look at that top rectangle. I can see here that the length or the width of our rectangle is seven centimetres. And I can see that the height of our rectangle is three centimetres. Now let's think about our properties of shape. What we know about rectangles, we know that rectangles have two pairs of equal sides. So that means the height on one side is the same as the height on the other because this is a pair of equal sides. 
and the width of one side is the same as the width of the other. So if we come back to our diagram, if we know that the height of this rectangle is three, this missing side over here we know must also be three. And not only that, but if we know that this rectangle is identical to this rectangle, which is identical to this rectangle, we know that the height on this one and this one and this one and this one must also be three. The individual heights of each of the rectangles is three. So I'm going to pop that labeling into my diagram. So now in black, we have the dimensions we were given already. And in green, we have the ones I've added in so far. Remember, it is centimetres, I just didn't have room to write it on my whiteboard. Let's think about what else we know. If we know that the width of this rectangle is seven, we know the width of the bottom is seven, but some of that's overlapping, so that's not going to give us our blank bit. The same for the middle rectangle. This length is seven, but some of it's overlapping. Ah. But this rectangle at the bottom, that line is seven, and we need that for our perimeter. So I'm going to fill that in as well. So we're getting there, but have a look and see if you can spot which dimensions are missing for us to be able to add up the whole outside of the shape. I'm going to label them in a different colour, just so you can see now what we are missing on the outside of our shape. So those two red lines are the two bits we are missing. We have everything else for the outside of the shape. We're just missing this red line and this red line. Well, let's think about what we know here. So I know that this line on the rectangle is worth seven. I know that the line on this rectangle is worth seven and some of it on the outside is two so can i figure out what is left on the inside can i figure out this bit here if the whole is seven part is two what's the missing part that's right the missing part in here is five because we have two and five so now I know that this overlapping bit is five and the whole length is seven. So what's the missing part on the outside? That's right, it's seven minus five, which is two. So the overlapping bit that was out here is the same as the overlapping bit out here. So we know that this red line over here is worth two. This bit was worth two, so this bit is worth two. So have a think about what this red line might be. We know that this bit is 4.5 and the whole length of the rectangle is seven. This little bit in here overlapping between the two shapes is your whole minus your part. Seven minus 4.5. Well, let's break this down and partition it. So seven minus four is three. And then if I take 0.5 off of three, that's half of a whole. So I'm going to get to 2.5. So this bit is 2.5. I now know that this whole length is seven and this bit is 2.5. So the missing bit, exactly the same as up here, it's the bit we started with 4.5 over here, 4.5 over here. Okay, so we now have all the dimensions we need it might look a bit messy on my diagram but every single length on the outside of the shape has been labeled now we could add them up by just starting at this length and just following around the shape adding up as we go that's a great method if you tick off each one as you go that's fantastic something else we might be able to do is pair things up using our number bonds so I know that I've got a seven and a three here, and you guys should remember that seven and three is 10. So I'm gonna wipe that seven and wipe that three off and write down 10 because I've already added up this one and this one. Also got a seven and a three down here. So that's another 10. I'm gonna wipe that off as well. Okay. Then I can see that I've got a three 
a three, a three, and a three. I'm going to use my three times table. Four lots of three is 12. So I'm going to rub those off. Now I can see I've been left with a two and a two, which I know is four. Rub those off. And notice that in my list, I've kept my place values lined up and I've saved my decimals here for last. Well, I know that four and four make eight. And I know that 0.5 is the same as a half. So if I have two halves, that makes another whole. So 0.5 and 0.5 makes one whole. So four and four is eight. 0.5 and 0.5 is one. Eight and one is nine. So now I can rub those off. Now, rather than to keep all of those numbers in my head, I've got an easier list to add up. 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 12 is 32, plus 4 is 36, plus 9 is 45. So the perimeter of this shape is 45 centimeters. Must remember to bring that centimeters back in. Brilliant. That was quite a complex one at the end to make sure you had all of the edges before you started adding up. Well done if you managed to follow along adding up in your head like me. But don't forget you can pause the video and you can write it down. You can use a number line, you can use your fingers, whichever method to make sure you get accurate adding up. Super. I hope you enjoyed day 10. Do come back and have a look for day 11. It will be up very shortly. Thanks very much, everyone. See you all soon. Bye-bye.